Well, the stage is set for Wednesday's inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. CBS News will have all-day coverage of the inaugural events, from the swearing-in to the star-studded Celebrating America primetime concert. And you'll be able to watch it all right here on KDKA and also online at CBSN. With division over this year's election and unrest over the results, chances are you've had some uneasy conversations with family, friends, maybe some coworkers even. So we have called in our etiquette expert, Liz Aquino, for advice on how to keep disagreements civil. Mm -hmm. And Liz, thank you so much for joining us. And I, I just want to know, is there a strategy we should employ uh, to, to try to keep people with opposing political views like from, from having this conversation that is just turns ugly. I mean, I try not to engage with people right now about politics. Absolutely, absolutely. If you do get into a political conversation, make sure going into that conversation, you don't take on a superior stance because doing so will prevent you from listening to the other person. Remember, this is a conversation and almost like a game of catch. There should be a lot of back and forth, almost equal parts speaking and listening. Make sure you're asking the other person questions that not only shows that you respect what they're saying, but it can also clarify anything that you might be misunderstanding. And then finally, and I think most importantly, don't pressure the other person to conform to your point of view. Think about your intent for the conversation. It should be to teach or to inform rather than to persuade. Because if we go into that conversation with the goal of persuading somebody to buy into all of our beliefs, we're gonna get really frustr frustrated when they don't. And that can lead to yelling or personal attacks rather than teaching. You know, I, I've seen some of these conversations take place and it's almost like a fight or flight kicks in. You see how aggressive they become so quickly. So when you feel like your backup is up against the wall, when you feel like your own beliefs are being called into question, how do you respond politely? Right, I think that your best strategy there is to stick with the facts as much as possible. So if you have a strong opinion, make sure you can cite research or concrete reasons for why you feel the way you do. And if you keep getting pushed on that subject and you've just had enough, you feel like you're on the brink, you're gonna lose it, make sure you have an exit strategy. Um, and I like to just use something very simple. Tell the person, hey, I don't think we're gonna agree on this issue. I really respect what you're saying. You make some interesting and even some valid points. I feel differently. Let's just move on and then bring up a subject that's meaningful to that person. Like maybe ask about their children or a trip that they've taken recently. Something to change the subject and change the tone of the conversation. Liz, I love what you say about like, listen yeah. to the other person and also conduct yourself in a way, in a tone and in a manner that the other person isn't put off by you and can listen. Right. Uh, because I think that's so important. But let's say things get heated and let's say you say something regrettable and how do you reconcile with with a friend right now i know a lot of people have been going through this sort of situation right the first thing to do is apologize and that apology should not include an excuse and you shouldn't rehash the argument so a simple i'm sorry i lost my temper i won't let it happen again and then remember, you were friends with this person beforehand for a reason. You must have some commonalities. So bring those up. Don't think just because you're divided politically, that means that you can't still be friends. And again, humor and lightheartedness always changes the tone. Uh, you know, Liz, with this kind of coming into so much of our lives and, and dominating so many conversations, how do you keep your views private? Right. I think you have to be prepared and be direct. So there are two ways to go with this. The first way is probably the most straightforward and just telling the person, look, in this politically contentious environment, I'm not comfortable sharing my political views. And the other way is a little more lighthearted. You could say, and this might be more applicable to if you're at a party rather than a work situation. You can say, hey, I'm off political debate duty for tonight. Um, if you'd like to debate who's going to be in the next Super Bowl, I'm your person to do that. I have some strong opinions there. 
What about posting, I mean, your political beliefs on social media? Even if you're doing it on your own personal page, you're doing it not during non-work hours, uh, I mean, I think it sort of opens the floodgates for possible problems. What is your advice there? Absolutely. I say do not post anything politically. It's a great way to lose friends and perhaps even lose a job. Some comment that you make that to you might seem very benign can sound inflammatory to other people. So even if you think you're very perceptive and know your friend group or your relatives who look at your social media, there's no way you can know everyone's political beliefs. So while some of those people might agree with you, you're also making a lot of people cringe when you write what you do politically. So I would save um, sharing of political beliefs to an in-person conversation when they can read your body language a little bit better and you can have a dialogue, a back and forth about that. Yeah, awesome. it certainly makes sense. And such great advice, Liz, especially during these times that it does feel like it's really difficult to navigate this yeah. stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. And if I can share one Martin Luther King Jr. quote, I think that's very applicable to this whole subject. He said, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. So that kind of helps you keep these conversations in perspective. Yeah. Great job. Liz Aquino of the Good Manners Group, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You know, at our very core, we all yes. want mostly the same things. Love, oh, it's peace, true. kindness. We have and so much more in common than, than what than divides what us. And yeah. that's always been true. And we have contact information yeah. for Liz Aquino available at PittsburghTodayLive.com.